is Anarchast. Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of Anarchast, your home for anarchy on the internet. Coming in uh, once again, live from Anarcapoco in Acapulco, Mexico. And I have Richard Heathen on the line from Liberty Machine News. I've been on his program before, back when he used to live in my old hood, up in what I call Siberia of uh, Canada, and <laughs> Alberta, northern Alberta, uh, a place called Grand Prairie. He's since moved to Vancouver and he's soon moving to Victoria, British Columbia, which is a little, a little warmer, uh, more rainy, but warmer. And uh, he's actually just recently put out or he's just about to put out an amazing documentary called hidden influence the rise of collectivism and the tagline is the social engineering of the power elite exposed and he's doing this somewhat in conjunction in conjunction with we are change victoria uh, libertarians in canada uh, and of course his own liberty machine news and it's the first in a three-part set of a documentary and uh, i was lucky enough to play a small role in this documentary and i'm going to play a a, a clip of it now, the trailer for it, and then we'll come back and talk to Richard. The biggest error that people make today is that they believe that what is happening or what exists in the U.S. today is capitalism. The U.S. is one of the least capitalist places on earth at this moment in time. Children are corralled into state indoctrination centers called public schools, where they are force-fed the approved narrative of reality. The wealthy elite who enjoy a privileged relationship with the state work in tandem with governments to mold the worldview of the masses to one which aligns with their interests. Because I'd been an activist and Ronald Reagan had just been elected and, and I was uh, a Reagan supporter, uh, they pulled me down to Washington and they put me into the United States Department of Ed in a very important position, Senior Policy Advisor, Office of Educational Research and Improvement. I mean, these are our children and they've got secret confidential documents in regard to what they're going to do, what they're going to use education basically to change our country. They don't want the children to have the, the academic skills and all that's not, they want them dumbed down. They want little workers, the new Soviet man, a little worker to spin off profits for the global economy. I was the liaison with the White House. I went over and I said, what, what are you doing? I always thought that if you merge the public and private sector, you have corporate fascism. And they said, well, Charlotte, I don't think anybody looked at it that way. Well, they knew very well what they were doing. They wanted to change our economic system from a classical, pure capitalist, not corporate, corporatist, pure capitalistic system, free market, to, they even pointed it out, to the system Japan had, a mixed economy, corporate fascism. The power corporation has always played a very interesting role in Canadian politics. It has supported Canadian politicians. It has employed them when they're not being employed by the Canadian public. It has um, talent spotted, polished, and moved forward those kinds of individuals. Fascism in general is when the uh, government uh, works with the large companies to essentially control the entire economy. A dying laissez-faire must be completely destroyed, and all of us, including the owners, must be subjected to a large amount of social control. So as you can see, really well done. Very interesting. I actually haven't seen it myself yet. It's the first screening is going to be on February 1st in uh, Victoria, BC. And uh, he's uh, soon after that will also be available for download on the internet. And we're also hoping to screen it at Anarchapoco. Before we get into all that, though, Richard, I have to ask you, how did you become an anarchist? Well, my uh, journey has been somewhat interesting. I started out, well, I'll have to start back to my childhood, actually, because uh, my my parents had a friend who was kind of out there. Uh, she was the lady. She documented kind of 
the the machinations of the power elite and I was exposed to this at a very young age so I was I was exposed to basically questioning the status quo since I was a child fast forward 9-11 happened and that really kind of woke me up it was almost like something I was uh, waiting for because it, it was I understood the you know the desire of the power elite to to consolidate power in a world government so when I saw that I'm like this is the catalyzing issue that pretty much I've been waiting for that basically justified everything that I've already kind of was thought and uh, exposed to so fast forward that I became a you know fan of of people like infowars and uh, and such and like that and basically through Alex Jones and Infowars and other alternative media outlets I was exposed to Ron Paul and his message of liberty in the 2008 and 2012 election now because I'm a bra I was a brainwashed statist from Canada I was very very skeptical of Ron Paul on his economic views but because I seen he was a man of integrity and spoke with conviction I was able to kind of put aside my skepticism and listen to what he actually had to say and it, it was very uh, it changed my life so and then moving forward with that the 2012 election really kind of solidified and then I, I came up uh, basically by taking libertarian principles to their logical conclusion one does kind of become very anti-state and realize that we in fact we don't need a government I hesitate from calling myself an anarchist just because I don't like that label I think it's being too affiliated with with uh, left-wing uh, ideologues who are basically authoritarian but basically other than that you and I pretty much agree on everything the non-aggression principle property rights self-ownership these are very important issues that basically are the bedrocks of, of a free society well that's interesting that you actually knew about a lot of the stuff that you talk about in the documentary uh, before 9-11 uh, but you weren't a necessarily even a libertarian or an anarchist at that moment in time so that's interesting because uh, to me they're almost tied together figuring out all this stuff and then realizing that government is inherently evil and once you really see what they're doing uh, there's pretty much no way that you can uh, if you're a decent moral person that you can be uh, in favor of any of these uh, uh, governments and what they're doing no, of course not. But the thing is, we, and this is something I cover in the, do in the documentary, we have been beaten over the head with basically authoritarian ideologies through the public school. We have been indoctrinated, brainwashed, and, it's, and it has been conscious. It's been very conscious. It's been deliberate. They, the Rockefeller Foundation funded uh, education initiatives in the United States and, you know, through edu through organizations like the Progressive Education Association and the National Education Association, they helped build the educational philosophy that moved forward in the 20th century. So it's no, it's no uh, wonder that we have uh, generations of people who are beaten down and brainwashed. You know, I think these people who are so brainwashed by the state, they, they're just, I, I, I can't help but feel sorry for them on some, on, on some level because you have to have your, your spirit utterly destroyed to, to kind of buy this and live by it. Yeah, it's uh, truly amazing to see how well it's worked. Uh, they, if you look through it all, and I'm sure a lot of this is in the documentary, this has been planned for decades, if not centuries, to sort of bring in this sort of uh, what's going on today and really essentially brainwash people. And uh, most people, of course, that's what brainwashing is. They don't realize they are brainwashed. So when they talk to people like us, they think we're crazy because they never heard these ideas before. And that's not what's on their TV. And that's not what they're told in school. Uh, but they won't look at facts at all or most of them won't, uh, but slowly some people are waking up. Uh, do you see some sort of a little bit of a awakening going on right now? Well, yeah, you know, with the rise of the Internet, other points of view are becoming available to people. And just, you know, it's a hundred month monkey syndrome. As enough, enough people learn something, it just becomes, uh, it becomes well known. Actually, the, the, I think the proper analogy, analogy is uh, that of the Overton window. Now, the Overton window is basically a concept saying that there is an acceptable window. There's a window of, an ex of acceptable points of view in society, uh, acceptable opinions that are socially acceptable, we'll say. And through that, uh, basically, the, we're in the window of basically we're in the window of what's not acceptable. But because of the Internet, it's pushing this window of, ex of uh, acceptable opinion in our direction because people are more and more being exposed to information that otherwise would have been censored. Also, you know, we're in late stage corporatism, late stage, you know, 
cap, uh, crony capitalism and the whole thing's falling apart, right? You know, this isn't free market uh, economics as uh, unfortunately has uh, been promoted in a lot of the educational uh, institutions, but you know, we're basically really seeing the last stages of the uh, prominence of the Anglo-American establishment. I think for that reason is why they're working towards consolidating their power in a world government. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I haven't uh, seen the entire documentary, as I mentioned. I'm really looking forward to it. But in the trailer, there's this one woman, and I forget her name off the top of my head. It's an older woman. And man, she was so passionate about what she was talking about. She's just full of fire and conviction about what's been going on and what's been done to people. And uh, I, I found that really amazing. So tell us a little bit about the documentary and some of the people in it and how you got involved in, in all of this. Well, the lady you're talking about, her name is Charlotte Iserby. She was a senior policy advisor in the Department of Education uh, under the first Reagan administration, Ronald Reagan administration. She was actually fired from her post for releasing classified documents. Her father, actually interesting enough, her, I think her father and grandfather, or, or was it maybe just her grandfather, I'll have to look that up but again, but her grandfather for sure was a member of the Skull and Bone Society, Secret Society, so her kind of <laughs> family is part of that uh, elitist kind of network but she kind of she's a constitutionalist she's a she's very pro freedom pro free markets so she kind of bucked the system and it basically pushed against that and i think partially if, I, don't, I don't know this for a fact but i suspect the reason she got her post at the department of ed was because of her lineage because in the interview i did with her she said she wasn't like most times these uh, that position that she had was reserved for people who were, you know, Harvard professors and stuff like that. She was, she was an activist, so she had, you know, a classical uh, education. She was, you know, very well educated, but not to that, you know, uh, that level as, say, as having a Harvard degree. Uh, other people in the documentary include yourself, of course, uh, Walter Block, he's uh, in it as well. Uh, who else? Tim Mullen, he makes an appearance in it. My friend Tim Mullen, the leader of the Libertarian Party of Canada. Um, He's great. He's an anarchist. I've had him on Anarchast before, and he's going to be here at Anarchapoco. So, uh, and Walter Block, of course, is also a past Anarchast guest. So you've got a great uh, lineup there. I can't, I can't wait to see it. I've also had a lady, uh, a girl named Lauren. She's a, um, she's a university student, and she was telling me about her experiences in the public education system as well as the university, how these left-wing ideologies, authoritarian ideologies, are being pushed in both the public education system and in post-secondary. So uh, very interesting. I also have a columnist from, one of my columnists for Liberty Machine News, Andrea Tweedy. She makes a, an appearance in talking about her experience uh, basically talking and trying to interact with the social justice crowd. And she talks about feminism because a lot of what I go into on the film, it, especially near the end, it goes towards uh, basically pushing back against the whole social justice movement because the whole thing, go, the whole that whole ideology goes back to cultural Marxism and was funded by the big foundations. That's, that's pretty much the, the thread that runs through my film is the role that, that the power elite, especially through their tax-exempt foundations, have used in funding these ideologies. You know, I really, Tim actually taught me something really powerful, which is you know, society largely is the collection of the... Uh, beliefs of people, uh, of the people in society. So since, you know, since then, I've actually kind of started to take a closer look at the ideologies people have and how they become prevalent in society and basically who's funded them. Yeah, it's all fascinating. We could talk for hours about it. And I'm sure you've got a three part documentary coming up on it. So there's Plenty to talk about. Uh, one funny thing is I didn't know what this uh, SJW was until just recently. I kept seeing it over and over um, in, you know, on the, on the, inter, on the interwebs. Uh, someone would say, oh, you're an SJW. And I, finally I looked it up and it means so, social justice warrior. Uh, what's your take on like what, what that actually is? Like what, what does that mean? Well, to me, social justice is an acronym for, that is basically synonymous with uh, cultural Marxism. It is the idea, you know, because the cultural Marxists came together to try and figure out why their Marxist theories didn't kind of co go down the way they wanted. Apparently, they thought <laughs> that you know, if in a if Europe was ever engulfed in a great war, that the people would rise up and uh, 
overthrow the bourgeoisie and uh, implement our Marxist utopia. Well, that obviously never happened. So these Marxist theorists came together to kind of explain the, this failure of their theories. And the, the idea they came up with was the inherent corrupting influence of Western civilization and, ca and, material, and capitalism, basically. So they thought, they came together, the, the, reason, the only way to have their Marxist uh, revolution was to tear down Marxist civil, uh, excuse me, to tear down the Western values. And so that's why you have all this attack on, you know, what I consider Western values. You know, there, one, there's one uh, document I quote in the film where it talks about, uh, it's from, it's a resource, it's literally a resource guide for, for teachers in Canada, but specifically was used in the Toronto District School Board. It's, they want to teach children, and it, it, I can find the direct quote, but basically they want to teach children that their lot in life is not it is not their fault is they're not responsible for it. it's responsible it's due to their identity their their that means their ethnicity their their gender their sexual orientation and that these identities are something that they are born into and unlikely to change and they call social mobility that is you know working hard and moving up the uh, economic ladder with uh, hard work as a false hope so that you know, so they're they're radicalizing people to try in the education system to bring forth their Marxist or collectivist uh, revolution. I really think that it is an authoritarian ideological agenda. And of course, you know, people will laugh at me, call me a conspiracy theorist, but this isn't even a conspiracy. This is an ideological agenda. People, it's like you and me, Jeff. We're colluding. We're working to promote an agenda of freedom, right? Right. And that's not a conspiracy so much as it's just us trying to promote our worldview. Well, these people are doing the same thing. So they've got they've got millions and billions of dollars from the from the state and billion dollar foundations. Yeah, one of the things I'm still confused about is you brought up how a lot of these people are essentially Marxist and you kind of see these undertones, you see it with even like uh, the Rothschilds and all these sort of uh, elites, uh, a lot of them sort of subscribe to this Marxist ideology. But that's really strange because all of these elites are mostly billionaires and, and multi-billionaires. And the whole concept is to tear down the bourgeoisie, which is them. Uh, and right now in Davos, uh, there's something like 1,700 private jets flying in. And a lot of these people have the same ideology. Uh, so it's quite clear to me that they... They might have this ideology, but they still want to be the ruling elite over this Marxism. Is that correct? Well, here's the thing. I really think that this stuff is just pushed because uh, Anthony Sutton, who uh, is an author who covered these issues, libertarian, he covered how the the <laughs> power elite helped fund Hitler, helped fund uh, how Wall Street helped to fund Hitler and Stalin, uh, the, the excuse me, the Bolshevik Revolution, and so. He, well, his conclusion was that they're doing this because they don't want competition. They just want to shut down, shut down possible competition and kind of use the state as a way to elevate themselves up. You know, I, I honestly don't think that these people are actually uh, these Marxists. It's just a really, it's a really good way to fund, to fund the, funding these things is a very good way to shut down your competition because, you know, you've got a privileged relationship with the state and then you you fund the state to to take other people's wealth to in to you know in strengthen the welfare state in order to like I said shut down competition and it'll elevate themselves up right it's to me it's just another form of corporatism it's yeah you, the, the they use the state to kind of brainwash these idiots on the ground because if you notice everything that these SJWs these social justice advocates they blame everything on capitalism their term is. They call it the, uh, excuse me, there's a big act, big name that they have, so a lot of, just give me a second, the white supremacist, capitalist, heteropatriarchy. That's their term. <laughs> that, that's, what they, that's what they think, everything, they think capitalism is inherently uh, racist, sexist, oppressive, and that somehow they live a more authentic or better life under uh, socialism. But they, they, they have no understanding of economics, of like I said, they've been brainwashed in this ideology since they've been, since they've gone into uh, elementary school, and it's just kind of beaten them down. A lot of them go into take their degrees in uselessness, <laughs> I mean, like their social. There's actually justice. There's actually um, 
social justice degrees. It's uh, based on critical theory. Now, critical theory is what the is what the cultural Marxists, also known as the Frankfurt School, came up with to try and tear down Western civilization. There's critical gender theory, critical race theory. Uh, you know, there's uh, they have called they call queer studies. They have women's studies. Women's studies actually. I have a quote in the film from a Miriam Chamberlain. She was a she was a, a feminist activist and a program director at the Ford Foundation from 1971 to 1981. She, in the document I have, she totally admits that philanthropy played a key role in the growth and institutionalization of women's studies in universities. So without these big foundations funding the this ideology of feminism, and I'm not, I'm not talking about suffragettes who want property rights and to vote. I'm talking about these people who, who are basically Marxists because... This one late, this uh, I found this one video on the internet from a speech here in Vancouver. It was a putting, it was basically putting together patriarchy and capitalism. And they're saying that this lady said that you know, in the early '70s when women's studies was uh, first becoming institutionalized in in uh, post secondary education, that what they did with these what these feminist scholars did is they put together. They, they analyzed Marxist theories and they found that Marxist theories for exploitation were insufficient because it's only based on, based on economic division of labor and not sexual division of labor. So modern feminism really, really, really is, uh, feeds off or at least plays into a Marxist uh, idea. Yeah, there's all these uh, different ideologies, uh, feminism, patri patriarchy, all these different ideas that just make no sense to me because I just look at the world as we're all individuals. And uh, if you believe in uh, free markets, if you believe in non-aggressing against other people, that's all I care. And then we're, we're equal as far as I care. And uh, but. They, a lot of these people try to like div uh, you know separate us and make us divisive and get women to hate men and men to hate women and and it's all crazy uh, well, in my you, mind. In these people's mind, that makes you a racist, Jeff. Um, a racist now? <laughs> no, I, I'm not kidding. I'm looking at the right now. I pulled up an article. Uh, basically, colorblind racial ideology linked to racism, both online and offline. There's a uh, Brendacia Tynes. I can't. I think that's her name. The professor of educational studies and African American studies at Illinois. Basically, if you don't see race, if if everything isn't a racial issue to you, Jeff, or a sexual issue, then you're a racist and a sexist. Because when, when I was growing up, that <laughs> I like how they flip all these things all the time. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like... <laughs> when 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 I was growing up, racism meant that you hated someone based on their on their skin color. Being a sexist meant you hated someone based on their gender. Now it's, it's like you said, it's been flipped over. It basically means that that you're not playing the the you're not a uh, you're not apologetic enough for being a straight white male because they they think that that is the worst thing in the world now is to be a straight white male because you're you're benefiting from all these privileges. So you need to kind of walk with your head down and feel internally guilty for what you were born. I really think that the the end goal of these social justice advocates is to basically make straight white men the the new kind of underclass to to as a way to repay in their mind for past injustices wow i guess we should also go after all the uh mongolians uh for what uh what was it genghis khan was it wasn't he mongolian i'm not really good I on think so, yeah. that part of history <laughs> go after them because of what he did uh, uh <laughs> we should go after the cambodians for what paul pot did uh, every cambodian should always be uh apologetic about that uh it's crazy uh very uh, collectivist mindset and of course that's really uh the sort of the the what well, that's right in the title of your of your documentary the hidden influence the rise of collectivism uh, very dangerous collectivism always has been and as far as i can tell always will be an incredibly the, the most dangerous uh ideology oh i agree it, it's well is the collectivism is it, it takes all these these authoritarian ideologies and puts them it, it, they're all together like fascism communism they're all based on the idea that the state or some higher authority should have uh, a role in governing you and even these uh, SJW types who don't who might call themselves like anarcho communists they think that the the rights of the individual should be subservient to the needs of the community
Mm, yeah. So, yeah, I've seen a little bit of that with uh, the anarcho-communists or what they call themselves anarcho-communists. To me, that's a uh, total, uh, um, what do you call it, oxymoron. It's a contradiction, two total, in terms. Con con contradiction in terms for sure. Uh, and they never really, I asked them, I, I try to go into these uh, forums or I used to. I'm, I'm now stopped doing it and I'm so much happier uh, because you just sort of ask them like, OK, so you're an anarchist, right? Because you believe that you shouldn't be ruled. And they'll say yes. And then you say, but you say you're a communist. So you want like to be ruled by the collective and they they won't really even answer that. Uh, um, I'm sure you've gotten into these debates before. Oh, yeah. They're, uh, <laughs> it's like a banana octopus. You call yourself whatever you want. But I'm but always their anarchism or excuse me, their communism comes before their anarchism. But. Yeah, that's, so yeah, they, and you ask them, okay, so if I'm going to be ruled by the collective, and then you get into this whole Venus Project thing, which is just Marxism with robots, which is totally hilarious. And by the way, if that, what's the Peter, uh, the guy who does it, Peter, Peter Joseph. Um, Peter, Peter Joseph, uh, if he'd like to come on uh, with me on whether it's on Anarchast or just on YouTube, uh, I'd like to debate him uh, because uh, it's totally insane what he's saying. And I think I could totally easily defeat him in a matter of minutes and have him crying and actually admitting that he's uh, got issues and emotional issues. And that, uh, you know, just this whole idea that we have to be ruled by the collective. It, it all sounds good, right? That's the, that's the problem with a lot of these things. And it sounds so nice. Like, oh, everyone should be equal. Uh, yeah, that sounds kind of nice, but when you get down to how we make that happen, it gets really evil. <laughs> Jeff, no two people. There's no such thing as equality. You and I right. are equal. I'm sure you're better at some things. I'm sure I'm better at some things. You know, you, the only way you can enforce equality is to basically bring everyone down to the lowest common denominator. As far as Peter Joseph, he, um, you know, he seems to think that competition in the market is is violence. That that's the, that's the term he uses: structural violence, and it's that's another left wing idea. That somehow me, you and me competing. Say if I had a, you know, whatever. I we both have two businesses. And well, we both have. We both have. You have Liberty Machine News. I have Anarchast and Dollar Vigilante. So we're in a violent confrontation. Yeah, yeah, because because someone might get more views, and that, that the person who <laughs> who wins in the the marketplace is actually doing violence against the other person who's losing because they're not benefiting. Right? It's I don't know. They don't. They have a very twisted twisted view on on reality i i just it just is so asinine to me it makes no sense and i don't think they really have much understanding of economics like uh, i think right uh, that seems to be the key and i uh, also seems they're all very broke all the people who believe in this stuff so i was watching peter joseph he looks like he's in his mom's basement uh talking about all this and when you talk to a lot of the anarcho-communists or people like this marxism stuff uh they're always broke and you ask them hey have you ever you know started a business or made any money and they're like no and you, you kind of see the anarcho-communists like in seattle at uh, occupy wall street breaking some windows they got their 300 dollar north face jacket on their 150 dollar nikes uh breaking a starbucks window which they probably were there earlier having a uh grande mocha frappuccino but smash um, capitalism right <laughs> right it's crazy it makes well, no sense well, no, these, like they said, these people are economically uh, ignorant. I, I think that, I don't know, they just, and like I said, also they've been uh, indoctrinated into this mm -hmm. ideology. And I, I, I just, I think, the, see, on our side, I think the people who are um, into liberty are more empowered, you know. Um, I kind of used to, I, I never was went as far, uh, as far full potato as these guys did, but I used to have, <laughs> before, before my Ron Paul days, I was a little bit more of an economic collectivist, but you know, I think that since I've accepted the philosophy of liberty, it's actually made my life better and I've been a more uh, empowered and happy person. Yeah, it's a, a lot of just jealousy and stuff is really what it breaks down to. Um, uh, like I, I had a meme on the Internet. Uh, it basically said that uh, communists um, don't believe in private property, uh, but they what they really mean is they don't believe in you having private property. They want it. Oh, exactly. They uh, <laughs> I, I think anyone who has worked to try and create something, whether it's a film, whether it's a business, whether it's anything – they kind of you kind of have a little bit of a respect for that process. You have a respect for the process of creating things. You know, um, I, I you know I work a day job, but you know it's it 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 really sticks it in my craw that when I see the amount of money the state takes from me, when I see what you know they think they are owed, uh, you know it's it's just it 
really, really is, I don't know, it just, it boggles my mind. It, it basically boils down to this, Jeff. I think they, they honestly think that they'd be better off in some economic, uh, some communist, some economically collectivist system. But if they would have studied history and economics, they would know that that's not the case. You know, you might hate uh, the 1%, but the 1%, half of them, the ones who are in the market creating uh, fairly, they're, they're the ones who give you jobs. They're the ones who give you opportunities. So, you know, also, they seem to think that eh, if someone's working at McDonald's, that's the only thing they can do, right? Uh, they don't see the idea of someone, you know, starting off low with a, a crappy job and then maybe doing something to better themselves. They, they don't see to have the any idea of what it takes or the the opportunities around us to empower ourselves in the market and make our lives better. Yeah, and I think that's a part of this whole indoctrination system as well as trying to make it so people don't become uh, entrepreneurs or biz business owners because then they will sort of realize that these philosophies they have are crazy because I've started numerous businesses and man, I've, you know, I, I speak with some of these communists sometimes and they say, uh, you know, you're, you're, taking advantage of the working class. And I'm like, I am the working class. I'm working. I got up this morning at eight in the morning. I got on the uh, thing with you. We decided to do this interview so I could get this information out there. I'll be working until probably two in the morning tonight. Uh, I do that pretty much six days a week. I'm trying to take Sundays off now just for my own sanity and health. Uh, but I try to explain to them, um, I'm working my butt off here. But they, they just have this this idea that the working class, there's two classes. And I, I don't get that either. I, I, I again, don't see... Uh, uh, any difference between the working class, someone who's working, and someone who owns a business, uh, that, that business owner is also working. It's just a different style of working. Uh, and even when you're an employee, you're essentially a private contractor. So you've decided, uh, so you're your own business owner. You're, you're, your business is just you, uh, but you're your own business owner and you have to sell your products to the people who want them, which happens to be your employer. Um, I saw a great meme on the internet just the other day and it showed, um, uh, one of those talk show hosts, Ellen DeGenerate, Ellen De De DeGenerate, I call her, uh, and it says um, uh, she makes fifty million dollars a year, but she gave a hundred thousand dollars last week to charity, so she's really praised by a lot of people. Uh, then you have a business owner who makes maybe one million dollars a year, and he actually has a business that actually creates salaries for people over a fifty million dollars that he's created uh, through his business, created wealth, and he's looked down upon as being taking advantage of people. It's it's his complete insanity. Well, exactly, and again, this comes down to the ideologies people believe in. This is something I'm really starting to focus on. I'm probably going to be the, um, the major focus of my work going forward is to focus on the ideologies that people believe, the ideas they hold, and how you know they're being promoted by the ruling class. But for instance, they believe that the reason they believe that is that they think that uh, that you know that you should own the like in a way they believe that you should own the product of their labor, but they don't understand that the the role that the the capitalist or the ruling class or the not the ruling class but the the capitalist business owner has you know they don't understand the work that the ca that the the business owner has to put in they don't understand the the risk they just see that well you're exploiting me because I'm doing this work and I I should own everything well no because you're not putting you didn't start this business you didn't bust your ass to to, to save up the money to start the business you, you're you're not putting anything at risk by starting a business because you know if you start a business there's always a chance you could fail. So they've never put any of this together. If they did, I don't think they would be. I don't think they would be these commie types. I don't think they'd be. They wouldn't be communists. They wouldn't be these economic collectivists. Because the funny thing is, Jeff, I, I, these people don't even really. Most of them, at least a lot of them, they don't even have a grasp. I don't think on what they what they're supposed to believe. What they say they believe. They just think that capitalism equals death and death and suffering and puppies die. <laughs> Which is the exact opposite of what really happens. Uh, everything we have. It's so, so funny talking to communists on the internet who hate capitalism, but they're coming in through their uh, iMac or their their iPhone and all this sort of stuff. They don't seem to get the uh, the two concepts. Um, we should wrap this up. My dogs are going crazy for some reason here. Um, the uh, you have. Let's just put some of the URLs out there because this goes over the uh, radio as well, and a lot of people listen uh, through podcasts, through audio podcasts. Yeah, Bruce. Sorry, my dogs are going. So 
all good, buddy. <laughs> uh, so libertymachinenews.com slash hidden influence is where you can check out uh, this upcoming documentary, which will be uh, first screened on uh, uh, February 1st in Victoria, BC. Uh, you can also check out wearechangevictoria.org and uh, libertarians in Canada.ca. Um, and also, uh, we're trying to get this screened at Anarchapoca, but we're going to need a little help because what I want to do is get Richard down here. And Richard's actually been so busy and, and working so hard, and he's actually moving again. Uh, so he might try to crowdfund getting the movie to Anarchapoco. I don't think it's going to cost too much money just to get Richard down here, but uh, we might try to crowdfund that. So Richard's probably going to start up a, a crowdfunding uh, site, and we'll put the links to that down below on YouTube. And if you want to see this uh, document, Documentary screened at an Arcapoco, which I think would be awesome. Uh, then you could maybe chip in a few uh, dollars there uh, and try to try to make that happen. And so, uh, Richard, why don't you let us know anything else you want to finish up on? No, I uh, I think we covered it. I think it's just very important to uh, you know expose the kind of the the actual ideas and uh, the beliefs that people have. You know, uh, society is governed by not just the ruling class because they do try and. Um, mold the ideas and the beliefs that people have, but they are governed by the beliefs and ideas that people have. We will, politicians will, if they see, if they see a movement going somewhere, they'll jump in front of it and act like they're leading it. So it's right. really important just to kind of spread this information and basically uh, shift the Overton window. That is the window of acceptable public opinion in our direction. Don't let the social engineers and the the collectivist hordes of the New World Order basically try and shame you and shut you up because that's what they want to do. They want to shut down any kind of uh, dissent to their their social engineering activities. They, they will call anyone who disagrees with them racist, sexist, bloody blah, blah. My question for them always is now, define that term because when i was growing up it you it means something it seemed to mean something different than it means now all right jeff thanks for having me on i really hope i can join you down at anarcho poco i think it would make a really interesting um really interesting panel debate for us to have you me uh, i think tim should be on there too because he's uh yeah, right. he's on there i think james corbett makes an appearance in my film i think he's coming down there too yeah so. he's going to be there too so yeah we definitely got to make this happen so uh, we'll put the links to that down below and please uh if you uh, if you're coming to anarcho poco you'd like to see that happen uh chip in a few bucks and even if you're not and you just sort of like the, all this kind of stuff and you like what we're doing uh, a few dollars and uh, we can make some stuff happen it really doesn't take much that's uh, and just like these videos, share these videos, share these things, uh, support this upcoming film uh, when it comes out on uh, video on demand for probably not very much money. Uh, check it out. Support Richard that way. Uh, that's how we can really make change in this world. And one of the things that you brought up just to finish with is how this is all just ideas. And this is all just uh, because it all is just ideas. We can actually have discussions and actually get rid of bad ideas. And I've really seen that with the Internet through Facebook, even with Anarchast. This was started probably three years ago. I used to have all kinds of anarcho-communists come on and say, you're not an anarchist. And uh, very quickly, a lot of the, the people who watch this program would sort of ask some questions like, well, what do you mean? What is an anarchist then? And, and pretty quickly, they would lose these debates all the time. And I haven't seen really a communist come on our, our videos uh, in years, really. Like the, the, they, they keep losing all the debates. It's, it's a debate of ideas. And thanks to the internet, we can have these debates. And that's why it's so important that we use this time with the internet out there right now to get these ideas out there. I totally agree. I couldn't possibly agree with you more, Jeff. Awesome. Really great. Richard Heathen. Uh, check him out. Definitely support uh, what he's doing and support everything else. Like I said, like, share. Uh, that's all you got to do uh, if you want. Throw in a few bucks or a few uh, Satoshis uh, and uh, and make things happen. That's how we can change the world. So that's it for Anarchast, your home for anarchy on the internet. Peace, love, and anarchy. This is Anarchast. Anarchast. 